Now let's get ready for the fight between Andrade and Marta Rosian. And first a look at the tail of the tape. For the two unbeaten 154-pounders, you can see the two-year age advantage for Andrade. He represented the United States in Beijing in 2008. Marta Rosian represented the United States in Athens in 2004. A one-inch height advantage for Andrade, who fights as a southpaw, though he is a natural right-hander, meaning he has the strong hand in front. He also has a half-inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in under the 154-pound weight limit, and tonight, Andrade unofficially outweighs Martirosian by two pounds on our unofficial HBO scale, 166 to 164. I'll be joined at ringside very shortly by Roy Jones and Max Kellerman. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to American Bank Center right here in Corpus Christi, Texas, USA. Tonight, Bob Barham's top rank incorporated along with Foreman Boys Promotions are proud to present an evening of world-class professional boxing for your entertainment sponsored by Tecate Con Character and Pacquiao vs. Rio Saturday. November 23rd, live on HBO Pay-Per-View. All bouts sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulations. This first bout, presented in association with Joe DiPartia's Star Boxing and Arthur Palullo's Banner Promotions. Also sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization. The three judges at ringside scoring this bout. Javier Alvarez, Don Griffin, and Jesse Reyes, and inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, referee John Shorley. And now, two undefeated fighters. Somebody's O has got to go. Twelve rounds of boxing for the vacant WBO Light Middleweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red, white, and blue, officially weighing in at 153 and three quarter pounds. His record as a professional, 33 victories, including 21 knockouts, no losses, and one draw. Originally from Abovian, Armenia, he now lives and trains out of Glendale, California. He's former WBC silver and ABF and NABO light middleweight champion, the number one ranked WBO light middleweight contender in the world, the undefeated Vanis Nightmare And fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue with black and silver. Officially weighing in at 153, three-quarter pounds. A perfect professional record consisting of 19 fights, 19 victories, including 13 knockouts. Fighting out of Providence, Rhode Island, the WBO, number two ranked light middleweight contender in the world, the undefeated Demetrius Caesar Pube. This fight is dedicated to our dear friend, California timekeeper Stan Gordon. Okay, fellas, both these trunks are high, so here's good and here's good. It's for the WBO world title. Give me a good, clean fight. Obey my commands to protect yourselves at all times. Such gloves, good luck. Okay, guys, Marosin is more well known to viewers likely. Are you looking for anybody? And he's had a good professional career. He's been in some exciting enough fights. Andrade is a blue-chip prospect, according to many. 
and says he's going to give the people what they've been missing, something special. Jim, he better because at this stage, good boxers don't excite anyone. Only great ones do. Both guys have been brought along painstakingly slowly in their professional careers so far. Both have been criticized for the level of opposition up to this point. They get the opportunity to fight for a title that became vacant because of an injury to Bisangurov, the Russian fighter who previously held the title. So it's a step up, but not necessarily a step up in opposition. They're fighting fighters about whom the same questions exist for both of them, Roy, given the absence of big-time opposition so far. Yeah, both of them are still a little bit unknown in the sport. They haven't really proved themselves. Um, Money Royce, the last time I saw him, was in a pretty bad fight against um, Eris Landry Lara, the Cuban. He ended up getting a draw out of everything, but it was not looking good for him towards the end of the fight. So tonight, we got a new fresh guy here who looks like he has something to prove and is definitely out to show Money Royce that he's, better, he's a better fighter. And already, Andre has landed a couple of clean counter shots. Martirosian got the technical draw against Lara in a fight that was stopped because of a cut over Martirosian's eye. And the scorecard, which turned it into a draw because it had Martirosian leading in the fight, was a bit of a shock to ringsiders who felt as though Lara had been dominant to that point. Well, so far, Andrade is dominant in this fight using his length and boxing skill to impose himself on Martirosian. What he's doing is he's jabbing first. Martirosian is not jabbing. So, oh, head break. But the jab, came together. Yeah, the jab is allowing him to be ahead in the fight and be out in front. So he's throwing first. Everything Money Rosen is doing is a counter. Over the years, Roy, we've seen more and more of this format by which a fighter like Andrade fights with the strong hand in front. Natural right-hander fighting as a southpaw throughout his entire career. It's the equivalent of if you yourself had gone into the ring and fought as a southpaw. Have you tried it, and what advantages do you think it gives to Andre? Yes, I have tried it. The good thing about it is that it puts that beautiful uh, right hook in front. Down goes Andre. He was landing a left hand, and Martirosian countered. And he himself, Andre, has never previously been knocked out. Wow. That round was being dominated by Andrade up to that moment, and he got a little too greedy. Yeah, and I think uh, Mike Russell had hurt him early when they came together with the head, but I couldn't really tell. Mike Russell's left eye looks red already above the left eye, maybe from that collision ahead. That's what I think. It's a right. hard right hand by Martirosian. Martirosian almost went to the corner. That sound replicated the notion that there were 10 seconds left in the round, and now there's the real bet. Shocking knockdown gives Martirosian the first round. All right. We're going to start changing our levels, right? That's all we've got is that straight right hand, all right? Keep that angle. We're going to work downstairs a little bit. Just throw it over your head. All right, you good? Good. Okay, we're going to work this round now. So work smart. Don't square up. Don't overextend your. Well, you see a perfect situation where the counter left hook beat the counter straight left to the punch. Money Rosen beat him to the punch with the short left hook. Uh, Andre was back to throw the counter left hand, but the right, the left hook got there first, and it sent him to the canvas. Plus, he was coming forward, so his momentum helped that punch send him to the canvas. Happy box numbers in round one. Marta Rosian was only four of twenty-five. No jabs, they were all power shots, but nevertheless, one of them was that counter left hook that put Andrade on his back. Andrade had landed 11 out of 58 punches numerically, easily controlling the round up to that point. I think Andrade got dropped because his right hand was down at his side. He felt comfortable at distance, but he didn't have the distance he at that moment. A, he didn't have as much distance as he thought he had. He Andrade just momentarily it. wobbles Martirosian with an uppercut. By far, the more solid punches in the fight have been landed by Andrade, but Martirosian with that one quick left hook has an edge on the scorecards. Andrade has been fighting this fight so far 
as though he realizes it's a showcase fight. It's a coming out kind of party fight for him, or at least he wants it to be. Bart Rosen still doing all of his work off of what Andre does. Bartorosian isn't initiating anything, not throwing his jab. No, he's just waiting, waiting for Andre to throw. Yeah, he's waiting for Andre to get impatient, to reach at him, and when he reaches, he's hoping, hoping that he can catch him coming in like he did with that left hook before. Andre has wide shoulders, and long arms, at least in appearance, for a 154-pound fighter. Sticks that jab out, it seems to travel a long distance. He looks like a huge uh, junior middleweight. I mean, tall, broad, rangy. Money Wilson is not bad for a middleweight either, though, a junior middleweight. He's only well, he's tall and rangy as well. He's only two pounds lighter right now. And also physically strong fighter. Very strong fight with a lot of experience. Martirosian is trained by Freddie Roach, so this is a situation very much like what we had in Broomfield, Colorado, where Ruslan Pravodnikov fought with Marvin Samodio in his corner, while Freddie Roach is off in the Philippines training Manny Pacquiao for his upcoming fight with Brandon Rios. Martirosian's in that position as well. Ernie Sabala is the supervising trainer in his corner tonight. Freddie Roach will get a phone call at the end of the evening. Andrade still with that right hand at his hip. Yeah, but that right jab is what caused what's causing a lot of problems for Martin Rosen. Now Martin Rosian chases him across the ring for a couple of counter right hands. But Martin Rosen seems to be the stronger puncher. Next Saturday, it's a fun night for boxing fans here on HBO. First, it's the one-man show, Mike Tyson, Undisputed Truth, directed by Spike Lee. In live boxing with super middleweight champion Andre Ward, returning to the ring to face undefeated Edwin Rodriguez. Next Saturday night on HBO. I'm going to counter him. Uh -huh. He can't handle your power. Okay? I want you to double jab and shoot the that hook. Right hand hook, all right? Right hand hook, come back with a left hand hook. Yes. Put on your chair. Huh? Right hand to the body, left hand to left the Left hand to the top. Okay? okay. You gotta let your jabs go though. Shorten up the punches, don't be so wide. Okay? One, two is not good, baby. You're gonna go three, four, just like you said, okay? This is the best okay? fight for Andre, I think. He threw a straight overhead left fight by a beautiful right uppercut that landed right under the chin of Money Royce. And I think it had Money Royce in trouble for a brief second. In the second round, by CompuBox count, Martirosian only threw 28 punches, Andre threw 60. So, through both of the rounds so far, Andre has basically doubled Martirosian in terms of the number of punches he throws. But Martirosian, as Roy Jones points out, is waiting to counter and working off of Andre's action. And he's the one who got the knockdown in round number one. Andre again has a tendency when he Bows up on the left hand, Roy, to drop the right hand. Yeah, he does. Uh, look, look, looks, looks like something that he's been doing for quite some time. Hard to make a, a stop an old dog from doing bad tricks. So it's just something that he does. Well, is it really necessarily a bad habit if he's a natural counter puncher? Not he's really. dropping the hand to force the other guy to lead? Not really. It's just that when the other guy comes in, he has to be aware of that and make the adjustments so that he's not caught by that left hook. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I got you. I got you. Thank you. And here we, I'm starting to figure that Money Wilson doesn't care about winning a points decision. He's trying to just wait and get that knockout on a counter-punching situation. Well, you heard Ernie Zavala between rounds saying to him that Andrade can't handle your power. So they were trying to wait to probably tire Andre down and then try to knock him out in the end of the fight. Whereas Andrade is trying to build up a lead because he knows that 
he's the better boxer maybe, but not necessarily the stronger puncher. We want Matarosin to put his punches together and make something happen. And I think Matarosin, through the experience of this fight so far, seems to believe that a big counter is his best shot like that. Good right hand by Martirosian as he was coming in. Landed this one on the button. Body shot by Martirosian. Starting to get a little bit more aggressive now as the rounds move on. Andre kind of controlling the middle. Martirosian stepping to the side to land his shots. And Andre thinking a little bit about that hook upstairs. So Martirosian's going with his straight right hand and the hook downstairs. And that's the best thing that worked for Andre so far was that right jab. If he can keep that working, that pop, that's probably his best weapon in this fight. Arterosian's family seated at ringside. Armenian family, a brother closest to you in the t-shirt. Father is the guy with the beard drinking the bottle of water in the middle and the uncle on the far side. For those of you who don't know, Glendale, California has more Armenian residents, according to many reports, than any city other than Yerevan in Armenia. There are so many of them there, and Martirosian has lived there ever since he was a small boy. You know what, you know what he's talking about? One second. Mete la derecha and show me that. Keep turning him in. Take his right hand out of the equation. I don't want you head hunting with you. Copy box numbers through the third round. Martirosian has landed 18 of 88. Andrade has landed 31 of 181. So Andrade has thrown more than twice as many punches so far in the fight than uh, Martirosian has thrown. Judges are seeing a big edge in activity for Andrade. Steve Weisfeld, how do you have it so far? Jim, I have it 29 to 28 for Andrade. Jim, I've judged 18 of Andrade's rounds before, and the first round was the first one that I've seen him lose. Except for the knockdown, Andrade clearly won the first round. So I had that 10-9 instead of 10-8. Rounds two and three, Andrade was busier. So after three rounds, I have Andrade up by one point. Andrade hits Martirosian on the back of the head. And John Shirley watches and then brings them back together. And I tell you, I don't like Money Wilson's left eye, though. It's starting to look bad. I don't know if it's a headbutt or a punch, but it's not looking so good right now. And that's what Max was worried about earlier, wasn't it, Max? Well, their heads came together in the first round prior to the knockdown. Money Wilson is not so skillful or powerful that he can afford to have a disadvantage like a cut, and we've seen him cut over that eye uh, multiple times in previous fights. He says... That it isn't the same cut, and it's always the same eye, but that the cuts have all appeared in different places. Under the eye on the cheek, over the eye above the eyebrow, over the eye under the eyebrow. Never in exactly the same place. And it hasn't opened yet. Your eyes closing, though, Max. Yeah. Right hand lands from Martirosian. Yeah, he's got a mouse under the eye in addition yeah. to whatever's over it. And let's be clear, it's the left eye that we're talking about. The one closest to the camera now. Roy, why does a guy like Andre stop snapping the jab when it's when it's his dominant weapon, as you mentioned? He's doing it because he's taking time that he does it, and he doesn't want to allow... Um, Martin Rosen to come in and counter the jab and catch him with that hook like he did before. So sometimes he's a little reluctant until he's assured that Martin Rosen is not coming in. Andre was momentarily in a defenseless position. Martin Rosen missed over the top. Of course, if he snaps the jab, Martin Rosen doesn't come in. No, he doesn't, but you got to remember, as far as we know here, Martin Rosen is the more experienced fighter. So, as for Andre, he has to be very smart and selective about which times he jabs and which times he doesn't. If you remember, he threw a jab when he got knocked down. And he was trying to throw a counter left off the jab, and that's how he got caught. 
So now he's a little bit reluctant and not so quickly to throw the jab. But it is the best weapon when he does throw it at the proper time. Hard right hand body shot by Martirosian. Flurrying upstairs. Generally speaking, Andre continues to dominate with his jab. The middle work with your left, right here. You put yourself on an angle, shoot there, shoot up there. Okay? You got this? Mm -hmm. All right. Drop the head, huh? Once you off the cut, one, two, one, right away. Last punch is the power shot. Okay? okay. Don't let him out hustle you. He, he's on the left two rounds. Okay? okay? Keep pushing him back. Deep breath. Stop. Why not stop? A close look at Marta Rosian's left eye. Through the fourth round, Vanis Martirosian has been almost entirely a counterpuncher, landing only three out of 28 jabs, while Andrade has landed 23 of 157 jabs. Overall, Andrade had a 20 to 11 connect advantage in the fourth round. So Andrade has been the more accurate fighter. He's been the more active fighter. He has carried the action through the fight into the fourth round. But he tasted the canvas on a strong counter left hook by Marta Rosian in the first round. Sometimes that can hurt a fighter, Jim, because he sits around and constantly waits on the opportunity to knock the guy down again, thinking that he's going to get the knockout, so he doesn't put out quite as much as he would have had he not hurt the guy so early. That was the second time in the fight that Andre landed a punch to the back of Marta Rosian's skull. Last couple rounds, especially at the end of the last one, I feel like Martirosian is getting closer with his power shots. Working more to the body in the last couple of rounds, and that could help him as the fight goes on. Vanish Martirosian trains a considerable portion of the time in the wild card gym. He also has his own gym in Glendale where he trains off and on. At the wild card, of course, he's worked with some very top-notch fighters, sparred frequently with Julio Cesar Chavez in preparation for Chavez's big fights. Body shot by Marta Rosian. Focusing there more and more. He's got a good strategy going now. He's looking at throwing that right hand to the body to make Andre relax. Then he's going to try to sneak it up top. Andre landed a good left cross as Martirosian was moving away. Good right hook by Demetrius Andre. All landing his shots cleanly and sharply. There's a body punch for Martirosian. All of that was set up by that jab, too, Jim. Anytime he can get that jab to pop like that, he lands usually other shots off of it. Great left hand lands for Demetrius Andre. starting to be a little bit more active now as round five goes on and getting hit with counter punches as the result of his greater activity. Still to come, Nonito Donaire against Big Darchini. They fought in Bridgeport, Connecticut six years ago in 1997. Darchini was the favorite that night. He was one of the hottest fighters in the sport. But Donaire got him with a wicked left hook. And since that time, Darchini has been hoping for a rematch. Here's a look at Dick Darchini in his dressing room. In amazing shape as always. But they're 14 pounds farther up the scale now than was the case in 1997. A Darchinian, whose first loss was to Donaire, has lost four more times since then. 
don't leave it to the judge. Don't leave it. Don't leave it to the judge today. Yeah, I'm jabbing him. And you're not giving your power shots. You're not clowning right now. Circle to your right. Shoot that jab. Go, go, go. 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 Go, go,
Andre, I, I don't want to say slapping, because he doesn't exactly slap, but he doesn't always make a fist at the end of the punch, it looks like. He he modulates his fist in order to land the punch, and at times that means opening up his glove a little on the hook. Yeah. And, and that, that means a loss of power. Right. Which is why Monterosa is taking some of those power shots as well as he is. Sophisticated viewers who watch all of our shows will remember that the Ukrainian star Vasil Lomachenko in his fights in the World Series of Boxing had no knockouts. Then in what was billed as his professional debut in Las Vegas against a fighter from Mexico named Jose Ramirez, he knocked him down twice with body shots the second time for the count. And when Max Kellerman asked him in the ring afterward, how come the power here when you didn't have it in the World Series of Boxing, Lomachenko said simple, I wasn't able to close the glove they were using in that competition and this glove I could close. <laughs> I think that's a that's a choice that Andre makes because he wants the punch to land, and sometimes in order to get the range on it, he's got to open it up a little so he can catch Martirosian on the end of it. Well, I think there are a fair number of guys who don't actually try to keep the glove closed on the jab. They're more concerned about it with the power hand. That's exactly right, Joe. A lot of guys do that because the jab, they're, they're not really throwing it for power anyway. And they can defend better, they can push a guy off better. There's a lot of things you can do with the open hand that you can't get it. do with a close yeah, hand. Exactly. The right hand by Martirosi. His best punch in a while. seeming to get some of his liveliness back in the last minute of round number seven. <laughs> Immediately after boxing tonight, stay tuned for the premiere of 24-7 Pacquiao Rios. Check out the guys with Yao Ming on HBO's Instagram page as we follow both fighters as they prepare to meet live on pay-per-view November 23 from Macau, China. And if you're a branded Rios fan, stick with us. We'll be talking to him live later on in the telecast. He's not that long. You're making him long. Get that up. We're not making hey. him long. You understand? He's coming right into you. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Just let it go. Okay? All right, kid, come on. Time to box numbers in the seventh round. Marta Rosian was 9 of 32. Andre, 21 of 63. We're back to that pattern that was observed earlier in the fight when Andre throws twice as many punches as Marta Rosian. Some of that because Marta Rosian is hoping to counter. Some of that because Andre's just quicker, more assertive, gets off more easily. He's more interested in landing punches. Andre throws two different kinds of left hands. The quick straight left, where he brings it straight back to his chin. And when he wants to throw it with power, it's this big punch, and he lets the right, the left hand just dangle by the by his hips when he brings it back. And I think that's what uh, Martirosian's banking on. Yeah, he throws that looping left hand when he really wants to hit him hard with it. And he throws a straight one when he's just trying to land. Like that when he wants power. And, of course, the straight one's more effective. And they said the pronunciation of his name is Andrade. I don't know. Nope. Uh, <laughs> no. Actually, Andrade. it's Andrade. The family prefers Andrade, okay. even though it looks like Andrade. And if, if they were Portuguese, <laughs> it would be Andrade. But they are not Portuguese. They're from, the family is from the Cape Verde Islands off the western coast of Africa. A set of islands colonized by the Portuguese centuries ago, and that's the reason for Portuguese-based names for people who come from the Cape Verde Islands. But his dad was quite assertive in saying it's Andre. Andre. <laughs> 
This has been a better round for Money Wilson. Good right hand by Martirosia. <laughs> Properly timing the counter there. his toes with his kind of range, Roy. And that's why I think um, Money Wilson had a better round so far because he's sitting down now. He's not really bouncing around like he was earlier. He's close enough so that Money Wilson can get closer to him with his punches. Martirosian looks better in this round than he has in quite a while. This evening, just prior to our telecast's beginning, a fighter named Nicholas Walters in that green and black ensemble on the right was well on his way to victory against a fighter named Garza from Mexico. Caught him with that body shot, which the referee ruled a low blow. It wasn't. Seconds later, when Garza got back up, Walters caught him with some power shots upstairs and scored his 19 knockouts in 23 fights. Garza has a title belt, which is Turn one of on those sad yeah. statements on the state of titles in the sport at this moment. Which isn't to say he's not a good fighter. Isn't to say he's, uh, 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 Walters uh, is the one with the belt. I hope I said that correctly. Nicholas Walters of Jamaica. Not to say he isn't a good fighter. He's a very good-looking puncher. May turn out to be something special, but... He has not yet earned a belt. He's been given one by a governing body because the real belt belongs to Chris John in Indonesia, who's never seen outside of Indonesia. Up to the eighth round, Andrade is still throwing basically twice as many punches as Vanis Martirosian. Not to mention in that division, here comes Lomachenko <laughs> and Donaire tonight. Well, and eventually Rigando is expected to move up to 126. Riggin died to some hoofs, swimming with sharks. Mikey Garcia just left 126. The question is whether Gar Garcia will stay at 130 or 135, or might he try to make 126 again to chase the money? And the question is, can Donaire get by Dorchinian later tonight? Who's That'll no be in the next fight here on HBO. Isn't both of those guys Armenian, uh, Money Rosen and Dorchinian? Absolutely. First time we had that, huh? Yes, although Dorchinian lives in Australia and Martirosian lives in Glendale, California, but both are of Armenian lineage. Thus, the number of Armenians in our hotel. And they're a friendly group. Yes, I know some very good Arme Armenian people coming up. Former United States Olympians, both unbeaten in their professional careers so far. Rosia hung around, hung around. He's going to have to do something, I think, a little big in the next couple rounds to leave an impression that he's in the fight. More than a little big. He's going to have to do something big, period. Yeah, because right now, I think um, Andre, his confidence is very, very high. He's feeling good. He's in a rhythm right now, and it's very difficult to hit a guy with a good shot when he's in a rhythm like this. Yeah, well, the reason I say, it, it, you know, it doesn't need something completely dramatic is some of the judges may have scored the first round 10-8 for Matarosia, and there were a couple of rounds that a judge might give him here and there, and suddenly if you win a couple rounds, you're even on the scorecards. Although I think Steve Weisfeld's 10-9 in the first round was a very good call. I agree. As Andre did dominate the rest of the round.
but but just hanging around and doing enough to maybe steal a few rounds here and there and make it interesting on the cards is not enough for Martirosian to say something tonight. He's got to he's got to change this fight. Deep breath, deep breath, give me a deep breath. Another one. Listen, Vanes, I want you to throw combinations. Threes and fours, do not jump back. Stay in there and follow it up with a one two. This is going to be number 10, baby. You have to back them up, all right? Keep down and turn. Boom! Boom! Every time, yo, every, time, every time you hit him with a shot, he bangs his gloves and he gets ready to jump on you. Learn when to pull on that motherfucker and bang this nigga out. You're making him think he's in there. You better than this motherfucker. We work hard for this shit. Let's, let's, let's. Go, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Round 10 begins. Demetrius Andre probably believes he's built a working margin on the scorecards against Vanis Martirosian. Let's see how our unofficial ringside scorer, Steve Weisfeld, has it through nine. Shim, I have it 87 to 84 for Andre. The number of punches is always going to go for Andre, but in round eight, I gave it to Martirosian because he landed the harder punches with more effect. Round nine, Martirosian seemed to take his foot off the gas. So with three rounds to go, I have Andre up by three points. And we may get something here because in Martirosian's corner, they said, don't jump back. When you get in, stay there. And kind of the same thing in Andre's corner. They want him to really put it on Martirosian. Well, Andre Mar landed a hard right-hand shot moments ago. Martirosian is taking them steps back, which they asked him not to do. And that's what just caused him to get caught by that right hook because he's backing up from a taller fighter. He can't do that. Interesting, though, that on Steve Weisfeld's scorecard, Martirosian is still within three points, meaning he could win the last three rounds and pull out a draw. And, of course, Steve Weisfeld scored the first round 10-9 for Martirosian, while you point out quite correctly, Max Kellerman, that some judges might have scored a 10-8. And I think there's another issue here for both guys. It's a showcase fight. Who wants to take the next step? Not just advance, but make a statement. And Andrade has been dominant, and if he closes the show strong here, it's a very impressive performance. And obviously, if Martin Rosian can change this fight, that's also very impressive. But if it simply continues like this and Andrade wins a decision, it's something less than that. It's an unusual division in that two of the four title belts belong to Floyd Mayweather, who is not a full-time 154-pound fighter. So the full-time 154-pound stars in the division are Miguel Cotto, who is at least considering the possibility of going up to fight Sergio Martinez at 160 pounds. And the other possibility is that he'll fight the other big star of the 154-pound weight class, Canelo Alvarez. And, of course, the best 154-pounder in the world is Erislan Lara, <laughs> who's not a big name and gets ripped off almost every time he fights, but I think he's the best in the division. And nobody wants to fight him because of his counterpunching style. Doesn't always pay to be a great Cuban counterpuncher, does it? Well, it doesn't pay, but it's great. I agree. Martirosian fought him because Martirosian was desperate to fight a big name fighter in some situation somewhere. So he took on Lara, but a lot of guys don't want to do it. As you celebrate Thanksgiving, November 28th, Tune in to HBO for an all-new documentary which examines how the universal thread of sport unites us as a people. Sport in America, our defining stories, tells those tales through the eyes of fans everywhere. Try to knock them out. Keep right. Round number 11, baby. Come on. Stay down. Stay down. Work your right hand and hook to the body, hook to the head. Don't punch his way harder than you. Come on. Straight up with this. Down, down, here we go. Roll. Okay. So got Take him over the top. Stay on that eye. Okay. He can't punch you, but you better be smart. 
Okay? Definitely my hand. Go, guys. Happy Box numbers in the 10th round. Art Rosian, 6 out of 32. Andrade, 17 out of 62. Andrade averaging 18 connects per round. Art Rosian averaging 8 connects per round. Throughout the fight, that pattern has obtained. Max, you think Money Rosen might be missing Freddy? <laughs> Looks that way, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I'm not sure Freddy being here would have made him any quicker. And Andrade has been much quicker. That's been part of the problem. Oh, goodness. Good right hook. And Ernie Zavala is one of Freddy's guys. I mean, Freddy stocks that gym with with respected trainers who he coaches up, and they seem to be on the same page. But that still doesn't mean you're Freddie Roach. Zavala has worked with Freddie Roach for 19 years, so he knows the drill. But still, Freddie Roach is Freddie Roach. Yeah, but I, I think this is more about Andrade being Andrade and Marta Rosian Andrade. being Marta Rosian. Andrade, excuse me, after calling him Andrade all night. I you did a great so job. Roy, I blame that one on you. Don't blame me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've called him Andrade throughout his whole professional career. Yeah. Fortunately, never called one of his fights. And it was only because of getting the chance to call the fight tonight that I learned it's Andrade. I'm going with what his dad says. His dad said That's Andrade, right. I'm with you. It's like Terrell and Terrell. I don't know which way to go on that <laughs> name now either. I just call him Proud. And to give credit where credit is due, he's been on ESPN a great deal, and they've gotten the name right. So yeah. we should be able to do it too. That's right. Andrade. I tell you, right now, looking at him, I can't wait to see him versus Arizona Law because that'd be a great fight between two softballs. And I know that's what's coming next. You and I, I think, we are the only two who really want to see a fight like that. I definitely want to see that. Yeah. Our two purest fans, well, Roy Jones and Max Keller. I mean, if you have this kind of style, a counter-punching southpaw with range, the tough part is that I really appreciate purists too, but if you're a brawler, you don't have to be great and I'll still watch you. If you have that kind of style, you don't want to just see a good fighter. You want to see a special fighter. Rigandau, for example. Yep. And Andrade is going to have to show that he can achieve on the highest possible level with that style. Something that Chad Dawson flirted with for a while was ultimately unable to achieve. We don't yet know what Andrade will do against a great opponent. I don't think Martirosian is a great opponent. And this fight's not over. Martirosian has another round. Yep. He's not bad, though, Jim. He's good enough that Andrade's reputation will probably improve off this fight if he gets the decision that we would expect him to get at this point. Last round yet to come. Don't jump back, stay on Statistically, numerically, Demetrius Andrade has dominated the fight. He has dominated the fight, and Martin rosian has been waiting to counter, and it hasn't worked out. And if he wants to do something, he's got to do it right now. He knows it, and Andrade knows it. And you heard Paul Andrade, Demetrius' father, in the corner saying, Be smart with your defense. The focus here for Andrade not to allow Martin rosian to get lucky with something big. And he said win the round. 
Ernie Zavala told Martirosian in the corner, gave him good advice. Not one backward step, and Martirosian hasn't been listening. Nope, he's already taken 10. 10 steps backwards against a taller fighter, a more rangier fighter. So when the shorter fighter goes backward against the taller fighter, he's only magnifying the taller fighter's advantage. And taking away his own advantage. Carter Rosian has a decision to make here in the next minute and a half. Does he want to be a, a good fighter with a name in this division in the mix, or does he want to do something? He's got to come forward and throw punches if he wants to be more than what he's been in his career so far. But he's getting touched enough by Andre, and authoritatively enough, and he doesn't have the hunger to do it. Andre has dominated the fight. Yep. Andre's confidence is at an all-time high right now. Obanis Martirosian waited a long time. Since the 2004 Olympics, after which he turned pro, finally fight for a professional title, and he simply hasn't gotten off in the way that would have been necessary to threaten Demetrius Andre. He got a first round knockdown on a counter shot, and hasn't done enough since then as Andre has piled up the numbers, throwing more punches, landing more punches, seemingly rolling toward what we would expect to be a decision victory here in Corpus Christi. To me, Munner Ross seems like one of those guys that I felt like with Howard Davis Jr. He waited too long to challenge for the title, because by the time he got to the title shot, the steam of becoming a champion was gone. And that's what I see here tonight. Great analogy, Roy. Howard Davis was a very gifted fighter who never got to where a lot of people thought he would go. Gold medalist and probably one of the two or three fastest fighters I've ever seen in my life, Howard <laughs> Davis Jr. That's not Margarosian. I wasn't talking about skill-wise. But it's a good, it's a good, the title it's an analogous the situation. Yeah, about the timing of fighting for the title. What is it? The steam, when you say the steam is gone for the championship drive, can you go into that a little bit more? Well, you have a hunger when you turn professional to become a champion. There's a sharpness about you, a crispness about you. You saw it in this kid, Andre, tonight. He has that ability, that strength, that, that sharpness, that freshness that makes you want to be a champion. I hate to say it. Eye of the Tiger, Roy? Yeah, something like that. Well, 11 plus rounds of this fight had a repetitious sameness which made clear to us who the winner was likely to be. But here is the anomaly moment. This was what happened in the first round when Andre was launching a left and Martirosian launched a left hook just ahead of him and landed the shot to knock Andre down. If something unusual happens on one of the three scorecards, we would expect that it begins with that base of the knockdown in the first round. But other than that moment, most of the rest of the fight seemed thoroughly the property of Demetrius Andre. Yeah, I, 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 I know why Steve Weisfeld gave the fifth and the eighth to Martirosi, and I'm not sure I would have. Um, so, so that may be a generous scorecard for, for Martirosi. Steve, tell us who the official judges are. Javier Alvarez was an outstanding amateur boxer with over 400 bouts. He succeeded Ray Mercer in the amateurs as the U.S. national heavyweight champ. He doesn't have tremendous judging experience, but he's been consistent. Don Griffin is a Marine veteran who's been a pro judge for 16 years. He judged Paul Williams versus Ashida in this arena early last year. That was a shutout across the board for Williams. Jesse Reyes became a pro judge in 1999 and does a nice job. He had Alvarez beating Mosley 119 to 109, and that was not a hard fight to score. And now let's go to Michael Buffer for the official scores on the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. The winner will be the WBO light middleweight champion. Javier Alvarez scores the contest 115 to 112 for Matarosian. Don Griffin scores it 114 113 for Andrade. And Jesse Reyes scores it 117 to 110 to the winner by split decision. And now the WBO light middleweight world champion, 
Demetrius Caesar. What a stinking scorecard that 15-12s for Martirosian is. That better be a uh, that better be a misprint or misread. Otherwise, you have to wonder what fight that judge. What's the was name of the him? judge who gave the 15-12 scorecard? Javier Alvarez. Ha and what did you say about him, Steve? I said he doesn't have tremendous judging experience. Yeah, or eyesight apparently. Javier Alvarez, in scoring the fight 115-112 for Martirosian, scored the first five rounds of the fight, all for Bonus Martirosian. I mean, that's, that's pure blindness. I'm sorry. It, it, it's embarrassing to us and to the sport when a scorecard like that turns up in a situation like this. Final CompuBox numbers for the benefit of the blind judge who scored this for Bonus Martirosian. He is outlanded by... Well, more than 112 punches, you know, 122 punches. There you go, 122 punches. And and he is outthrown by 326 punches. So, you know, and then Drade lands at the higher connect percentage. And he did it in more rounds. Mondo Bizarro, a very, very strange scorecard. Jabs, and Drade lands 98 more and throws 359 more. And still... One of the judges manages to score the fight for Vanis Martirosian. Texas better not let him judge a fight for a while. Wow, <laughs> that was strange. One fight down, two to go here in Corpus Christi, Texas. You just saw Vanis Martirosian and Demetrius Andre in a fight that was marked by overwhelming dominance for Andre in terms of number of punches thrown and landed one knockdown, that by Martirosian in the first round, a split decision win for Andre. He deserved a unanimous decision.